everyone, Engineer Pat 5290 coming to you from the workshop. We're going to be starting to do some repairs and some rebuild products here in the shop. I have done a lot of work in the shop of cleaning off the bench so I can have some space to work up here. Uh, we're going to be rebuilding the 6827 flat car as you saw in the last video. It's in really rough shape with lots of rust damage. The wheels are in bad shape and so are the couplers. So we're going to give this car a quick clean and the rebuild and also going to strap load this old HO scale bridge I took apart and we're going to make it a wide load. So you are going to need a few things. Obviously the car and the wide load. A towel with some all-purpose cleaner or some Windex. The Lionel 6-14078 truck. A, a, a Phillips head screwdriver. The drill press. We're going to use that to drill the grommets out. And also um, a pair of safety glasses and a piece of wood to keep the car elevated on the table. Uh, before we use any power tools, as I am reminded by New Yankee Workshop host Norm Abram, let's talk about shop safety. Uh, safety is the number one priority on anything. It's important to understand and read all of your owner's manuals before using your power tools. By practicing good shop safety skills greatly reduces the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there's no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. So that's just an overview of the project we're getting ready to do. Now we're going to get into the nitty gritty. So hang on tight and here we go. All right, everybody, we are ready to begin. First, we're going to take the car and we're just going to wipe it down to get the dirt and dirt and weather off. We're just going to do this to the top with this cleaner. I'm going to be very careful around the lettering. All right, as you can see right there, the car is pretty clean. So now the pre-work is done. Now we're gonna open our parts. I love these retro orange and blue boxes. And as you can see, it comes with a set of trucks. Make sure these are in really good shape before you install it on your rolling stock. As you can see, these work pretty good. Let's set these over here for the time being. And of course, in the bag, you have the screws and the little grommets where the rivet is. So do not lose this. So now the parts have been unboxed. Now we are ready to begin the demolition. We're ready to start taking the trucks off of this and installing the new ones. So give me just a second, I will shift the camera and we will have some fun with the drill press. All right, everybody, the fun part begins. We're gonna grab our piece of wood. It can be just about anything that's long enough. And we're gonna take the car and we're going to place it right on top of the piece of wood. As you can see, this drill bit is perfect to go inside the little rivet and that's what you want. So, um, that's that. Now, I've also gotten a piece of wood, oh, moth came in, to actually hold the little, the side with the brake wheel against something where I can be able to drill it without damaging the car. So that's the way this is going to work. So let me go ahead and turn the camera once more to get a better view of, of what this is going to be done. And, um, we're going to have some fun. All right, we are ready to fire up the drill press. Make sure we get it in there right. Make sure you got pretty good clearance. So you want to keep a good steady hand when you do this. That's where the drill bit is going to go. I will zoom in on the camera just a little bit where you can get a better view of this. right check once more and you can see where this is going you can see my hand is fully away from that bit so anyway we're ready to have some fun all right here we go
all right? Wait till the drill press stops before you mess with anything else. As you can see, it all came out just perfect. Uh, that metal piece is going to be hot, so what you want to do is wait till it cools off before you properly dispose of it. So we have one more left to do, and this one's going to be pretty easy to do. So, uh, all right, check once, and here we go. See, we're not quite through there. We're not quite through there, but we got the truck out of the way. Now what we can do is we can scoot the car over a little bit so that little rivet can just pop right out. And you want to be careful in this stage because you're just about to go. plastic a little bit but that's okay but we got the rivet out of there so if something happens and the plastic melts a little bit it's okay the grommet hole is gonna the little grommet's gonna take care of it so you want to kind of scrape it out with your finger a little bit but not bad not bad the old hardware is off and now it's time to replace it with the new so I will ship the camera to the other side of the bench and we're gonna put this thing right back together. All right, we are ready to assemble the car with the brand new trucks. So you wanna carefully put the hardware in a little small place, careful not to knock it over. Now we just take one of the trucks and you just roll it right underneath. Get under the light where you can see it. And now you can also put the second set in there. You line it up with the holes as best you can and then the screw is going to take actually take care of the rest of it and see I've got it lined up pretty close so next we're going to do is we're going to put the grommet and the screw in take a grommet we insert the screw and then we take a small Phillips head and we put it in second sometimes these may be a little bit tricky to get in just be patient with them If there's any dirt, just blow it off. Then we line up the holes. And then we screw it in. If something happens and the grommet doesn't go into place right away, it's okay. Just, just twist the screw and the screw will help align it into place. See there, I've got one down. We got one to go. See, this is the one where the plastic melted a little bit. I don't particularly like that. All right.
There we go. Now we're cooking with gas. Yeah. There we go. Now we've got a car that is fully rebuilt. You want to make sure the screws are evenly tight to give it some play. Um, if there's something happens with the screws up here, if it's not level a little bit, just got to adjust it carefully. So we've got a car that's rebuilt. Next step, putting the load on. Stay tuned. Okay, guys, after discovering something off camera, I noticed that I melted the plastic in this hole. I figured out a way I can fix this that will possibly work is take a plastic wall anchor, just cut the, the end off where you enter the screw. Enlarge the hole, press it in, then put your parts right back in, and you're in business. Because I knew it was wide enough to fill in that hole. And it's just a matter of getting it back in. And look at there, look at there. Took basically a little problem and was able to fix it up. And let me tell you something, you can't even tell there's something wrong with it. So uh, there's a little quickie fix in case something happens and you melt the plastic. So uh, next is gonna be getting the load on. Hey y'all, we're back inside. I've already put it on the track and did some tuning to the car and did some testing off camera. Uh, with that little washer that I made for it, it runs fine. Just had to adjust the screw just a little bit just so it will turn around. So I ran it with the Milwaukee on the head where I can practice with it and just increase the speed a little bit. So there's a couple of tips that I will give. When you are rebuilding a car like this, I would recommend Put it on the back or you can put it on the very first car where you're able to easily grab it. Um, inspect it, uh, make sure the wheels are on there and making sure it makes the turns well. Uh, if something's not right, stop it and fix it. So that's just a couple of tips that I will give. We are getting ready to put the load onto the car and this is the way she's gonna look. I'll just dry fit. That's the way the bridge is going to look. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to chain it to the car and we're going to put it on the train and we're going to let it run around the layout. So stay tuned for the final part as we prepare this car for service. All right, guys, we're ready for the final touches. But before we do, we're going to take my new little vacuum cleaner I got for my birthday and we're going to dust the car off. So we're getting ready to let this thing go ahead and get all the dust off so here we go This thing does look like a little little uh, mini hair dryer there, but this is powered by a lithium ion battery, and it's powered. Uh, you charge it through a USB port. So now we're going to go ahead and set the load up there, like it's going to be. Oh man, I don't know if y'all can hear that or not, but that's rain. And I've also found some chain that I just found in my shop. Uh, this is how I. Um, now let me adjust the camera for a second. This is some of the chain that I used when I worked on the log cars. I actually used this same chain for that project. So what you want to keep in mind is you want to keep in mind the distance between the bottom of the car and the track to prevent a short circuit. Um, I have done tests with it, and this is the way the load is going to be strapped, the chain to the, to the car. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this link out and we are going to clip it together. So uh, I'll be, I'm gonna do that off camera so I can have two hands and I'll be right back. Hey guys, Engineer Pad 5290 coming to you on the next day of the project. 
After working with the chain last night, I needed two hands. And you can see I've got the bridge and an old piece of um, HO track and even a couple of old 031 ties to use as like a bridge pier, for example. And you can see I looped it all the way down into the bottom of the car and just wrapped it over twice. So uh, it is ready to go. Uh, what we will be doing is putting this on the head end of the train and we will pull it around the layout for a minute. All right, the flat car with the brand new bridge is on the head end and we are going to put some power to the track and we're going to let it run around the layout for a minute. Well guys, that pretty much wraps up for this rebuild project. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Good to see the 2338 still running with the brand new wide load on it. Great to see it up here. So a successful rebuild. So um, just remember y'all, smash the like button, drop a comment down below and subscribe. Tap that notification bell where you get all the latest updates if you would like to enjoy this journey. And I look forward to seeing y'all soon. Thank you all and may God bless.